Hello, everybody, and welcome to Friday Apocryphal Podcast, your one-stop shop for everything Friday Apocryphal and podcast. And boy, do we have a show for you today. Today, we are covering the, ben, al- the alphabet of Ben Sira. Yeah, the alphabet Chapters of Ben Sira. 12 through dot, 22 dot, dot. through 22. Well, it's dot, I know it's, dot, dot, I know it's cut here. off. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, it's uh, it's cut off from our view. Uh, but yeah, it's through uh, through 22. We'll be finishing the alphabet of Ben Sear today. And what an alphabet it has been so far. You know, uh, a lot of the stuff we're going to get today are very, very uh, Aesop fable-y. Oh. Lots of animal stuff. So is there going to be like a bunch of little people who nail them down to not, rounds? Not quite. They're mostly just, th- there's a bunch of animals. We're going to be answering questions about animals today. Oh, wait, that was Gulliver's Travels. What am I thinking of? I have no idea what you're <laughs> thinking. I was going to say something, but you got it. I was like, I don't remember that from Aesop, but okay. <laughs> you know, Maybe it's in there. I just and because of Animal Crossing, sometimes I mistake Gulliver's Travels for Jonathan Livingston Seagull. <laughs> That's that's terrible. You know, You've got such a what? what? That's horrible. You know, because sometimes Gulliver. No, I got it. Yeah, I get it, but that's terrible. Yeah, I'm letting you know. Well, we're gonna be uh, reading the alphabet of Ben Sira today, continuing it, finishing it. Very excited, and the next book that we'll be reading on Friday Apocryphal Podcast will be the Wisdom of uh, Solomon. Oh, yeah, because uh, we did the poll. And that's what uh, everybody voted for. Not yeah, everybody. That that would be a lie. That's but like the, the majority last of wisdom book that we're ever gonna do. Let's let's. I sure hope so. Until we <laughs> get to the New Testament, where there's no wisdom literature, as far as I know. Uh, I don't think so. But there is a lot of very interesting stuff. There's and, uh, wisdom. <laughs> the, it's it's definitely not the same type of wisdom literature. Uh, it's. There's definitely, you know, stuff that's uh, filled with sayings, but it's not quite the same. Uh, so, yeah, very excited to get to to the next book. We did take a nice little break with the alphabet of Ben Sira. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I guess, what translation are we using? We are using Rabbinic Fantasies, Imaginative Narratives from Classical Hebrew Literature, edited by David Stern and Mark J. Mursky. But this translation specifically also was worked on by some dude. I think it was a page beforehand. Yeah, he's in here somewhere. Yeah. Uh, Norman Bronsnick. Well, thank you. Norman, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, so for anyone that is just joining us that doesn't know what this book is, uh, it is a geonic period uh, Jewish parody. So it's a medieval Jewish parody. Uh, the, Ge- the geonic period was between uh, 800 and 1,000 CE. So that's uh, kind of the time period we're looking at. But uh, it's definitely it's definitely a parody. It's it's ridiculous. So, uh, for anyone that takes it seriously, don't no, chill <laughs> out. We're, yeah, we're, this is this is just some jokes from the medieval era. Yeah, it's Come basi- on, guys. yeah, basically some ancient jokes. It's an old joke book. Yep, like your D and D character had. Yeah, yeah, that's right. He did have one. <laughs> oh, the eldest D and D character. Yeah, the, the the dwarf. Yeah. yeah, he had a joke book. I did, and I would just. Read jokes. It was good. Yep. It was a nice gimmick. All right, let's uh let's hop into chapter twelve. I chapter believe chapter twelve, and I'll hand this off to you uh, at like chapter fifteen. Okay. Why does the cat eat the mouse rather than other rodents? I think the correct question is why does the cat kill the mouse and not eat it and yeah. just leave it there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does not. Uh... Does not actually eat them, usually. Yeah. Uh, at first, the cat and the mouse were friends. But one day, the mouse went and slandered the cat before God. Oh, boy. Yeah. Saying, what a sh- <laughs> Sovereign of the universe, the cat and I entered into a partnership, but I have nothing to eat. There's a note. Uh, okay, so he's... um. So the mouse is mad. Because the cat is not getting, or sorry, because he's not getting his uh his part of the deal. 
Okay, he's following the Oxford manuscript here. Okay. Um, God said to the mouse, you slandered your friend only in order to eat him. Now he shall eat you. Wow. And you shall be food for him. Wow. The mouse did not say anything about eating the cat. He just said that he had nothing to eat. Yeah. It's like Maybe they were supposed to share food. Maybe that was part of the deal. I, but I entered into a partnership here with Lawrence, and now I have nothing to eat. Well, obviously. I that take that as a threat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. I am obviously threatened here. Oh, wow. No. Surely. No, there's plenty of food. What do you, you need, cannibal. man? You cannibal. Get away from me. <laughs> Ask the mouse, sovereign of the universe, what have I done? God replied, oh, you unclean rodent. Have you not learned from the sun and the moon? They were equal in size and appearance, but after the moon spoke ill of the sun, I diminished her light and added it to the sun. Oh. Uh, see, <laughs> well, that's news to me. Is that how it worked? Yeah, yeah. See, we, this is why you need to read the alphabet of Ben Sir to know the cosmology. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's as good as Enoch, guys. Let's see, totally. B. Hulin 60B. So apparently this is in some rabbinical thing. Yeah. You too yeah. spoke ill of your friend so that you could eat him. Therefore, he shall eat you. Sovereign of the universe, said the mouse. If so, I and my seed will perish. God replied, I shall recompense you as I have the moon. Um, in compensation for its diminished light, the moon received the accompanying light of the stars that appear in the night. Genesis Rabbah 6. Ah, I see. Okay. We've made, made up for it, I guess. Oh, yeah. The mouse immediately went and bit the cat on its head. Then the cat jumped, cast the mouse onto the ground, and bit it. And the mouse died. At that moment, the fear of the cat fell upon the mouse. And as a result, the cat eats mice. Oh. So a <laughs> similar account, I, I didn't know that. <laughs> a similar account is recorded by Rabbi Moses Hadarshan, 11th century, in his Genesis Rabadi, uh, Albeck 59. This is very much a parable. So this is, uh, so that was a thing that uh, multiple people uh, said, I guess. Apparently. Unless. No, it's been said a lot. It's a parable. It's, it's many stories. Sure, yeah. I guess. Well, now we're in the next chapter, chapter 13. Shit, really? And this is my yeah. favorite one. <laughs> is it? Oh, right. Oh, is this the... Okay, you'll, you'll get to it. Why does the donkey urinate in the urine of another donkey, and why does it smell its own excrement? Hey, and this is monetized. Still, this is... <laughs> exactly. Um, and this is still uh, a... This is still Nebuchadnezzar yep. <laughs> talking to a child. Yep. Yeah, keep that in mind. Even though he promised to let him go earlier. Yeah, but you know, he's he's gotta get some answers. These are These are the twenty something questions he's got left. Yes. <laughs> this is this is uh, a very long game of twenty questions that's not being played properly. Uh and it's twenty two arbitrary questions. <laughs> so, it's nothing like twenty questions. No, nothing like it at all. Uh but you know what? The, he's asking the important questions. Nebuchadnezzar knows exactly how to get the proper answers out of this. Damn kid, who's a genius, I guess. Of course. He, he outsmarted everyone at one, so, you know, yeah. he's got it covered. At zero, even. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. Came out of the womb talking. Yep. Uh, when God created all living things, the donkey asked itself, why do the horse, the mule, and many other creatures have relief from work? Well, we must work generation after generation without rest. So there's a note here. Ginsburg in Legend of the Jews, Legends of the Jews, not Legend of the Jews. <laughs> that would be a really cool Zelda spinoff. Huh? Uh, 554 and 55 takes the Hebrew word reva to mean reward, which makes a little sense in the context. It should be rendered instead as rest or repose, which explains the nature of the donkey's complaint, since as reputed, it is subjected to ceaseless toil. Yeah, so donkey's uh, all mad that uh, other creatures like him um, 
they get don't to rest. Work as hard. They can go run free or lay down for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, this one can't. Let's find out why donkeys can't do that. Let us pray to our creator that he gives us relief. If not, we will stop procreating. The donkeys prayed, but their prayers were not answered. Did they now? Yeah. <laughs> God, however, said to them, when your urine flows as rivers and a water mill can be made thereby to turn, and when the odor of your excrement is like the aroma of spices, I will give you your reward. That is why they smell their excrement and urinate as they do. So they're waiting for it to smell good? Yep. Oh. That, that, okay. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be waiting for a while. All right. After uh, this next one, I'll hand it off to you. This is chapter 14. Why are the cat and dog enemies? Oh, cool. When the cat was created, he went... Well, to- well, my, my cat and dog are enemies because my dog annoys my cat, and my cat doesn't like that, so he starts, you know, batting him in the face. Oh, sounds reasonable. Or literally biting his ass. Oh, that's gross. It is, but the, the dog's not very happy about it, but the cat uh, walks off pretty happy. It's like at one... It won by biting his ass. Yeah. You know, it can't Great. kick very hard, so for cats. It ooh, went ooh. for something else. <laughs> Maybe your cat just loves eating ass. Maybe. Uh, when the cat was created, he went into a partnership with the dog. They hunted together and ate. It happened that three days passed without either one finding anything to eat. The dog said to the cat, How long shall we go hungry? You go to Adam and stay with him in his house, where you will eat until you're full, and I will chase lizards and insects. That way, we shall both eat and stay alive. You know, they both could have went to Adam. No, yeah, but dogs are filthy creatures. Oh, that's right, that right. Of course. The least hate. Of course, yeah. <sighs> the cat said to the dog, let us take an oath that both of us will not go to the same master. The dog replied, well spoken. (laughs) Wait, hold on. So they're friends, but they don't want to hang out around. They don't want to hang out together? Of course. Oh, okay. Why would friends hang out together? Okay, yeah, you're right. They immediately took the oath. The cat went to the house of Adam where he found mice, which he ate until he was full, while the rest of the mice fled. When the man realized that the Holy One, blessed be he, had provided him with a great remedy... He gave the cat lodging in his house, food, and water to drink. Apparently, Adam has a house. I mean, I'm after getting kicked out of the garden. After, yeah, but right, this you'd is, figure this is presumably in the garden. Oh yeah, you'd when think the cat yeah. was created. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, what did the dog do? He went to the wolf and asked him, "May I lodge with you for the night?" Yes, the wolf replied. They went to sleep in a cave, but later the dog heard the sounds of animal feet. He woke the wolf. I hear the sound of robbers, the dog told the wolf. Go and drive them off, said the wolf. But the animals rose up against the dog in order to kill him. He fled and went to the ape, but the ape drove the dog away. Then he went to the sheep who received him. As he lay with the sheep, the dog heard the sound of footsteps. I hear the sound of robbers, he said. Go outside, the sheep answered. The dog went out and barked. A sheep must be over there, said the wolves, and they went and found the sheep and devoured it. As as you do. Yeah. Yeah. The dog fled from the lodging to lodging, unable to find a resting place anywhere. He finally went to Adam, who received him. The dog and Adam lay down in the lodge together. At midnight, the dog said to Adam, I hear the sound of footsteps. Adam got up, took his spear, and went with the dog to chase out the wild animals until they drove them away. Wait, so they ended up lodging together anyways? Yeah. Okay. Then they returned home together. Adam said to the dog, Come to my house and live with me. You will eat my food and drink what I drink. So the dog went with them. When the cat heard the voice of the dog, he came out and said to him, Why have you come to my place? The dog answered, Adam brought me. Then they began to quarrel, whereupon Adam asked the cat, Why do you quarrel with him? I brought him home because I saw he is clever. All heart. 
Uh, All heart. Okay, well, let, yes, let's, let's... The Hebrew word kelev, dog, is taken as a blend of kol and lev, all and heart or mind, meaning, in effect, all mind. So, so they made a deal, right, where they wouldn't have the same master for whatever reason, uh, <laughs> inexplicably so, uh, and then they end up having the same master anyways, but the dog also knew that the cat was going to Adam. So if he knew that they had this oath, why would he go with Adam? Because there's no other choice. I, I understand that there would be no other... Uh, going to starve Yeah, death. why make the deal in the first place? It, there's no, no point to that. But whatever. Oh, well, I don't know. Maybe the cat knew that the dog wouldn't find anywhere. Uh, and, maybe. And the cat's a jerk. Maybe. That sounds like a cat, yeah. Yep, here you are. <laughs> but don't worry... Adam told the cat, you too can stay with me just as you are accustomed. The cat protested, my lord, the dog is a thief. Is it proper to dwell with a thief? And to the dog, the cat said, why have you broken your oath? The dog replied, I will not enter your dwelling place. I will not eat what is yours. I will not hurt you in the least. But the cat would not listen, and they began to quarrel. Seeing this, the dog fled to the house of Seth and stayed with him. The dog tried to make peace with the cat, but the cat would not agree. And to this day, they remain enemies. As the parents, so of the children, whether they are beasts, animals, or men. Speakers of Proverbs say about them, a sheep takes after a sheep. Uh, all right, so... That is a very weird explanation, but it is an explanation nonetheless. Of course, and like any story in the Bible, any explanation will do. It doesn't matter if it makes any sense. Uh, this one even less so. Yeah, now we're in chapter 15, yes. and I'm handing it off to Lawrence. Thank you. If you guys are enjoying the stream so far, make sure to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't, because it really does, uh, really does help us out. Uh, all right, so chapter 15 then. And... We have a donation drive. Once we hit $666 in donations, we will be getting a Thetan meter. We will be seeing who the most clear is on our team. Clearly. We'll be taking it apart. We'll be showing you how it works. We'll be talking about Scientology. Be a fun time. Yep. All right, let's hop into chapter 15 then. Why does the dog... Acknowledge its master while the cat does not. A lot of cat and dog stories. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, he needs to know about his pets. He does. Would Dang you it. say that your cat acknowledges you? Yes, 100%. You Usually when they're hungry or something, they acknowledge you. <laughs> not even. Cats enjoy social things with people, especially when they don't have other animals to interact with. Um, you know, my cat particularly is a only pet that we have yeah so he actively seeks out attention he's even recently gained skill like learning to acclimate to the basement and coming down here to meow at me to <laughs> remind him that he wants to be pet upstairs I, know, I, I can see chris running experiments on uh the skills that his cat has learned yep i know <laughs> i just notice when my cat does things differently that's all it's uh, he's got his habits he doesn't like to go certain places but since i've been petting him a lot you know we're at home all the time uh he has decided to come down and, and harangue me about getting the attention upstairs well, you know he officially gained a level in walking downstairs yeah also not a real skill this is, it's a very inappropriate question because right here we are learning that the uh the, the cat does not acknowledge his master wow that's so a, like that's you, crap you're bullshitting no, modern me. science well, let's see what what a, ge a true genius has to say about this. Uh, well, you know, medieval cats, geniuses. Yeah, cats right. were different back then. Yeah, uh, cats yeah. were different back then. Whoever eats anything from which a mouse has eaten will forget his learning. That's B Horayot 13a, so another uh, rabbinical thing. Uh, I get it, because if you eat something that a diseased rodent has eaten, you might get disease. Surely then, a cat that eats the mouse itself will not know its master. Okay. Well, I mean, if it gets rabies or something. Yeah. So the, but if you have a rabid cat, you shouldn't keep it around. Yeah, anyway. You shouldn't. You shouldn't. 
Uh, that's a bad idea. But you know what's a good idea? Going into chapter, chapter 16. Chapter 16. Oh, hyper quick. I, I know. That one was very, very short. Is this one even substantial? Uh, a, a little. Ooh. <laughs> so, next question. Why does the mouse... Sorry. Why does the mouth of a mouse appear to be sewn? What? It. I, I guess it appears to be sewn. Have you ever looked at <clears throat> yes. a mouse's mouth yes, and thought... I have. This is, it's obviously sewn. Um, no. Me neither. You know, guys. Very small, be, but this, because it's a mouse. That's weird. <laughs> this is just, that's just a weird statement. Yeah. Well, let's find out what he has to say. To is this. there a note? No. No note. Okay. All right. Let's see what Only he has to say. Only our commentary about this exists. <laughs> During the time of the flood. Okay. So this is way after. So, uh, well, yeah, I guess. Uh, okay, never mind, never mind. Well, I was trying to put way it into before place with, Ben Sira. No, I know, I know, but I was trying to put it into place with the last story. Never mind. Um, so during the time of the flood, all kinds of creeping animals and insects, male and female, entered the ark. One day, the mouse and its female were sitting near the cat. The cat said, "I remember that my father used to." Eat the mouse and its offspring. It is therefore permissible for me to eat them as well. Uh, <laughs> the cat immediately tried to eat the mouse. Okay, so I feel like you, if you wanted to eat the thing, you wouldn't say, I'm sorry, but it's okay for me to eat, eat, to eat you. And I then mean, not expect them to like run. run. <laughs> yeah. So Unless, he telegraphed that. You know, you're talking to a modern animal that doesn't speak. <laughs> but obviously, these are ancient animals, and ancient animals spoke. Obviously. <laughs> like Balaam's donkey. Yes. So the cat immediately tried to eat the mouse, but it fled, searching for a hole in which to hide. At first, it could not find a hole, but a miracle a miracle. So a miracle took place. A hole was found and the mouse entered. You know, if you're on Small the ark. A miracle. Small miracles, guys. Oh, you also wouldn't want a hole. Yeah, you wouldn't want a hole in the ark. Oh, oh well, they're screwed now. The cat, well, maybe it was just like a little we, crevice in between. You think them. Noah brought termites on with him? That would be a poor decision. And a miracle. <laughs> yeah. He brought a whole ass miracle with him. Uh, so the cat wished to follow, but it could not because the hole was too small. So the cat put its paw inside to pull the mouse out. But the mouse opened its mouth. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens next. The cat pulled the mouse's cheeks by its nails and half a span of its mouth was torn off. Ouch. Oof. I did not expect it to get like this. Yeah, and we want to know how the mouse got those scars. Oh, it's the, y'all, oh man, the Joker got it from this. He just s swiped it. He's got the, yeah, yeah, he said Joker, yeah. And uh, what what's the, um the, that urban legend about the slit mouth uh, woman? Oh, the Japanese one? Yeah, where yeah. Where she wears the mask, and then when... She uh, takes it off. She's like, do I look pretty? Yeah, and no matter what you say, she's going to kill you at the end. Bite your head off, I yeah, think. Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, so after the cat had gone away, the mouse came out of the hole and went to Noah. Righteous man, the mouse said. Be charitable and sew up my cheek, which the cat, my enemy, tore. Noah replied, go and bring me the hair of the pig's tail. The mouse went to the pig and found it asleep and stole some hair from its tail. Then the mouth returned to the mouth. The mouse returned to Noah, who sewed its mouth up. To this day, the stitch is visible. No, so that it is that that's how that works, I guess. Like, you know, there's a lot of mice and we didn't have modern biology or taxonomy or other things to preserve those and people didn't 
old draw or anything, and there's no photography. So good luck documenting. Wait, how there many- was no photography. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, man, there's no way they could document all the types of mice there are. Maybe there were these weird stitch mouth mice that are of the region, and we're just completely unaware of them. Yeah, we do have a. You know, the- Kinds of mice. Quiet, Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The kinds. Um, well, this is just the only mouse. Yeah, they were like that at first. I don't know, man. So uh, there is actually uh, a note here. So Rabbi oh. Moses Hadarshan, 11th century. Uh, I think that was a different uh, one that you discussed earlier, that you mentioned earlier. Um, no, it was the same one. Nope, very same guy uh, that you mentioned earlier. Uh, records this story in Genesis Rabadi, uh, with the yeah Genesis Rabadi with the difference that the mouse in his account is told to fetch Noah a hair from the cat's tail, which it does when the cat is asleep. I how are they coming up with these things? These are from like rabbinical works. Maybe I think they I, just... see, I don't I don't know enough about who. Uh, Rabbi Darsh- Hadarshan is. I don't know know enough about that person, but uh, I, I I don't know if he was just not very um intelligent or uh if this was just like because style it's, at the time, man. It's a style at the time. Well, like it sounds like you're gonna have a really fun time when we read the Talmud. No. Oh. I don't think we'll be doing that on this show. You don't want Talmud Thursdays. It's not apocryphal. It, it's a uh, it's rabbinical yeah. stuff. So it's like commentaries on Talmud Thursdays. No, <laughs> <laughs> it'd be horrible because it's 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 imagine, so boring. Imagine reading a transcript to a debate where in the debate you had to quote what your opponent just said. Yes. Imagine that you're in a debate where you have transcripts that you have to quote what your opponent said in those transcripts. And then you'd follow it up by Lawrence said, but you know, in a good debate, (laughs) in a good debate, you do repeat what your opponent said. Well, you try, you try, but not, not the way that they're, that they're doing it. Not at all. There's Uh, also some Talmud pieces that aren't translated. Yeah. Which sucks. Why aren't they translated? I'm looking at you, translators. rabbinical translators. <laughs> Personal attack there. All right, next chapter. Chapter 17. Why does the raven walk unsteadily? Because it's a bird. Once the raven saw the dove walking gracefully with a step lovelier than that of any other bird. Since the dove's step pleased him, he said to himself, I will walk just like her. But while he nearly, oh my God. But while he nearly broke himself in two, trying to learn to walk like the dove, the other birds made fun of him. Embarrassed, the raven said, I will go back to my original step. But when he tried to return to it, he could not. He had forgotten the way he used to walk. The raven wobbled. He could not walk in his original step or in the new one. The proverb says about him, he who seeks more than he has will be left with less. The raven was left with nothing. Wow, that's horrible. Don't uh, try to do things. Yeah, don't don't try to better Man. yourself. No, I, don't do it. I I learned I learned that. It's a good lesson. Thanks, guys. Yep. Well, see yeah. now Chris can't walk. <laughs> he can't walk. That's it, guys. No, guys, I just wobble. All now. right, he'll just uh, be sitting here for a while. You guys will be hearing from Chris twenty four seven. Occasionally, oh he will uh, turn the stream on and be like, "Hey, guys, I'm bored." Uh, I've been here yeah. for X hours. I've been Haven't here. Haven't been able to get to the bathroom no. in weeks. Just, uh, just wobbling. I uh, <laughs> found this uh, this can I've been using. Uh, <laughs> uh, pretty bad, guys. I'm glad that I haven't. Forgotten every ability I have. Yeah. Either way, well, next. if you try to learn new ones, obviously. Oh you yeah. Will. yeah. Yeah. No, I I just have my current abilities. I don't have any new ones. Either way, next chapter, 
Chapter 18. You can hand it off to me after that. It's a long one. Yeah, yeah, the next one after that's long, too. Okay, yeah, I'll hand it off after. All right. Nebuchadnezzar asked Ben Sira, why does the raven... Actually, hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys guess. What do you think uh, he's going to ask about ravens? Why does it say nevermore? No, that's, that's pretty new. So I'm going to say... Uh, why does it need shiny things? I don't know. That's my guess. Yeah, shiny things. Shiny thing. Why does it repeat what people say? Why does the raven copulate by mouth? <laughs> oh, all right. Yep. Nope. That's, that's left field of everything we thought. Very good. Why Thank does you. the raven copulate by mouth? It doesn't. <laughs> um, so here's what, uh, oh, what Ben Sira has to say about why ravens copulate by mouth. Oral, oral stuff, great. The sages of Israel have argued about the question, Ben Sear replied. There are those who say... Okay, that, first of all, the sages of Israel have argued about the question? Yes. So... It's as absurd as Discworld. Yeah, they're, they're imagining a scenario where the sages of Israel are sitting around... Arguing back and forth about why ravens copulate with the mouth. Yes. Okay. Keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> Humanity has windle, whittled and wasted their time doing things like this for a long time now, guys. So let's see what the what the sages of Israel had to had to say here. Oh yeah. Uh, okay. So the sage of Is the sages of Israel have argued about the question. Ben Sear replied. There are those who say that because the raven copulated in the ark, he was created odd. But wouldn't other animals, animals have also done that? Yeah. yeah. Um, others say that because he is wicked, a thief and a pest, the raven was made different from all other creatures. Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, a wise man once came to the sages as they were arguing over the question and said, I will give you proof of your words. Oh, so it's the second one? Is that last point there? I guess so. That he's a thief and created differently? Okay. Um, when Noah was in the ark, he wanted to send the raven to see whether the waters had gone down. But the raven ran away from Noah's presence and hid beneath the wing of the eagle so that Noah could not send it. They searched for the raven, and after they found it beneath the eagle's wing, Noah said, Wicked one, go out of the ark and see if the waters on the earth have diminished. He, um, he was sitting next to an eagle. Yeah. Dude, that's better. <laughs> Just ask the eagle. Yes, the eagle can fly further and faster. Has better vision. See better, yeah, yeah, by a lot. The raven said to Noah, of all birds, you could find no one but me? Good, good question there, Raven. Yeah. Noah replied, I have authority only to send the birds whose initial letters spell the name A. That is the letters Ayan and Yod, which must mean the birds called Orev, I guess, Raven, and Yona, Pigeon. So why send the Raven and not the Pigeon? Asked the raven, because there is a city by the name of Ai, Noah answered, and its inhabitants are destined to kill Yair, who declared that the raven is unfit to be eaten while the pigeon is fit. Okay, so he wants to make sure that the thing he sends will not be eaten? Oh, I guess so. Flooded. But yeah, wouldn't the city be dead? Yes. Gone? Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes, it would be. Uh, there is a note on this, however. So uh, that's an interesting story. Uh, Cross-reference uh, a B. Sanhedrin 44a, so it's a tractate. Uh, the inhabitants of A were sinful people who detested anyone who proclaimed the laws of the Torah. Okay, yeah, we, re I re we remember reading about that city in uh, Joshua. I Very think. briefly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Either way, let's uh, continue on and that's here. that's a long time after Noah. Yes. 
And also, yeah, everything everyone was would be wicked, flooded, was and everyone would be dead. <laughs> yeah, um, it's not gonna get eaten by anything. There ex- are no animals out there. <laughs> yeah, uh, the raven brazenly replied, "The only reason you're sending me is so that I will be killed, and you will be able to have intercourse with my wife." What? <laughs> wow. <laughs> you're gonna. Screw my life while I go. I know it. Uh-huh. I, know, I know you're a person and I'm a bird, uh-huh. but... But I am very rem- certain this would happen. Mm-hmm. And remember that they copulate with their mouths, so... So, oh boy. Oh, boy. Oh, that's... Oh, that's pretty bad, too. It's all bad. Oh, yeah. Geez. Okay. All right, let's see. Okay, so the raven... Uh, it's, all, it's all mad here. Uh, I will be killed and you will be able to have intercourse with my wife that is the only reason you made every creature come into the ark with its mate what yep because he wanted he to, wanted to he's kill using him of bestiality with everyone else right right yes yep oh my god <laughs> yep Noah was a furry you heard it, heard it here <laughs> first Noah immediately responds by cursing the raven. (laughs) May you be cursed by that very thing that you slander with me. May you never copulate with your female except through your mouth. Wow. What a curse. Oh, and all the animals on the ark answered, Amen. (laughs) Of course they did. Yeah, woo, go Noah. Boo Raven. Uh, That's so Raven. You know, <laughs> if you ever want to curse someone, all you say is, may you be cursed. What a curse. Uh, by you, that thing by you, which you, you curse. Yeah, but you but can, if you don't... But you if you can don't, only like, copulate with your mouth. Yeah. Well, if you don't specify what the curse is, it doesn't do anything other than... It does a random effect. Got to roll on a chart. That's... That sounds yeah. not good. Sometimes the random effect has a random bear come out and maul a bunch of children. <laughs> oh, yeah. Dude, like, oh, I boy. feel like a couple of these things could have just been random charts with what happens sometimes. Yeah. 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 But, okay, you know. So this raven has to copulate with its mouth. Yep. Uh, the raven exclaimed, why have you cursed me? I, I will take you to court. Damn. Who, who has, who will be the judge? <laughs> I, uh, it, it's really funny. It's like uh, in our society, it's immediately, I'll sue you. <laughs> <laughs> everyone is going to be, everyone is dead except for Noah's family and some animals. So either, uh, another animal will be a judge or one of Noah's family members or will God, be a maybe. judge. They can get, uh, or, the, or God, they can but get the Raven's wife to be the judge. They could. Yeah. Let's see how she feels about all this. Um, <laughs> no replied because you are a because you are a leecher lecker I don't know a lecher lecher mm-hmm. yeah. a fool and you cast aspersions upon the innocent wicked thing I do not cohabit with my own wife <laughs> what <laughs> this is um this is Noah saying this um, I do not cohabit with my own wife who was created in my image and in my likeness <laughs> and who is permitted to me. So why should I ever cohabit with your female who is not in my likeness and who is forbidden to me as well? So like, I don't fuck my own wife. Why would I fuck yours? <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's at least he's honest, I guess. Oh, so this is brilliant, man. Whoever wrote this. Oh, it's Spencer you're Rice. a fucking genius. Right, yeah. You're long dead, but you're a fucking genius. Oh, yeah. Uh, they've got a lot of explaining to do. Where did his <laughs> sons come from? Yeah, yeah. He doesn't fuck you're his right. own wife. Well, who did? Uh, and this is also from the last uh, Talmudic tractate that we covered. Sanhedrin looks like. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there are more details about it there. Okay. So if you ever want to read about why Noah never fucked his wife, <laughs> go read Sanhedrin. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy. Okay. So <laughs> that's funny. Why did you call me a lecher? Yes. Okay. okay. Why did you call me a lecher? Asked the raven. You are truly a lecher. 
judging by your own words. No, re- no responded. It is not I who have given you a bad name. And since that time, the raven copulates by mouth as a result of Noah's curse. Now, there is one final note here. Um, looks like Tractate Hullen, 127A, uh, where the weasel... Okay, so where the weasel is mentioned as the only exception... Oh, I think this is it, right? So just... The, oh, so, no, I'm reading the wrong one. Just <laughs> so we're clear. I'm reading the wrong comment. A lecher is a noun... A man given to excessive sexual indulgence. Mm -hmm. A lascivious or licentious man. Ah, okay. Thank you. uh, Like you. Ah. (laughs) Thanks. Uh, And viewers like you. (laughs) Yeah, viewers like you. Uh, Okay, so the comment here on Noah's response. uh, This is based on a Talmudic principle that the leveling of a false charge against one's fellow is... Prima facie, right? Uh, mm. I don't know. Is, uh, so it's evidence that the author, th- sorry, that its author is guilty of the very same crime. Oh, yeah. Like, um, doth thou protest too much, right? Mm. Thou doth protest thou too doth much. Thou what, doth whatever. Almost the same thing. Doth thou say thou That's doth? do. Yes. I don't know. What it do. <laughs> Sometimes it don't always seem like it is what it do, but it be... That's just uh, you how know it what? Is. I'm going to hand this off to you. Oh, things will never be Wonderful. the same. Yeah. So uh, next chapter there, chapter 19. 19. If you guys are enjoying the stream so far, make sure to drop Damn a like. It, Lawrence. What? <laughs> don't tell me what chapter it is and then tell me to like it. Never mind. You, you don't even have to put up the thing. I like it. doesn't matter. Nothing matters. <laughs> but that's why I have to do it. It's why like, are all the species in the world found in the sea... Except for the images of the fox and the weasel. What? Uh, <laughs> um, so, are okay, so I'm guessing that they're talking about things that look like other creatures. So, B. Holland 127A, where the weasel is mentioned as the only exception. Uh, the meaning of the Hebrew demut is likeness, form, etc. I've rendered it as species, which etymologically means outward appearance, shape, form, <clears throat> For the correctness of this translation, check Tanhuma Vaikra 8 and the use of Demut at the conclusion of the work. So okay. so basically they're asking why do you see like things that look like any terrestrial animal in the ocean except for those? Yeah, but haven't they ever seen an otter? Otter. I was going to mention yeah, that. Yeah, otters. No, they're native to the, the Americas. Oh, well... <laughs> so well, there you go. <laughs> apparently, there are dog-like animals in the sea, Maybe but Japan there's not too. fox-like animals. Right, right, right. Uh, oh well. Maybe there are otters. I swear there are otters, but they're mentioning the sea, not the ocean. So I don't know. Look, the sea can be any body of water, really. That's what I would think. Um, because the fox is clever. After the Holy One, blessed be he, created the angel of death, the angel looked at the other creatures and said to God, give me permission to slay them. Wow. (laughs) Very straightforward. (laughs) Angel of death. (laughs) He's like, hey, can I kill him now? (laughs) Just just a second, dude. I know you. I just made these guys. (laughs) Actually, I could see God just asking, why did I make you now? Why didn't I wait to make you? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, give it a sec. To which God replied... You have power over all creatures except for the offspring of the bird, Milham, the phoenix, who will never taste death. Ah. Oh, oh, of course. Interesting. Phoenix, phoenix Helm, stuff. The phoenix. Of course. We, yeah. Oh, well, we forget about him. Oh, man, this is a really long one, huh? Um, said the angel, sovereign of the universe, because they are righteous, set them apart so they will not learn the ways of the other creatures and sin before you. Do not let them taste sin. The Holy One, blessed be he, immediately gave permission, and the angel built a large city for the offspring of the phoenix and brought them there. He engraved on the door... A whole that city for phoenixes. Yes. That's pretty cool. Phoenix City. Phoenix, Arizona. Yep. He engraved on the door of that city the following. A decree has been issued that neither may, neither my sword nor the sword of others shall have power over you. 
Do, do, hold on. Do you think the guy who founded Phoenix, Arizona read this? You know, Phoenix is a pretty generic term. I, I know it's a generic is, term, but, but like, it might be the might case. might be biblical too, yeah. Uh, you shall not taste death till the end of all generations. Afterward, the angel of death returned and God told him, cast one pair of each creature into the sea. Over those that remain, you may have power. Uh, there's a note. According to the Budapest manuscript, the sea was to serve, like Noah's Ark, as a place of protection for each species against the ravages of the angel of death. Thus, the fox, who by his cunning avoided having a representative of his species in the sea, outsmarted himself and worked in the end to his own detriment. Okay. The angel cast a pair of each species into the sea and sank them. What did the fox do upon seeing this? He stood up and cried. The angel of death asked him, Why do you cry? For my friends whom you've cast into the sea, replied the fox. And where are your friends? asked the angel. The fox stood up near the seashore. Seeing the shadow of the fox in the sea, the angel of death thought that he had already cast a pair of foxes into the sea. He therefore told him, Leave this place. The fox fled immediately. The weasel met him, and the fox told him all that had happened and what he had done. The weasel went and did the same thing and also escaped. Okay, so these two crafty animals mm. uh, basically faked their deaths. Yeah, and they tricked the angel of death. Yeah. that's By having a reflection. Yes. Death is... Uh, that's amazing. You know, it was new. It was a new concept at the time. Mm. You yeah, and I'm reflect upon it. And I'm, sh- <laughs> and I'm sure the angel of death, he was he was just getting uh, used to the idea of uh, killing everything. Yeah. So Yeah. A year later, Leviathan gathered all the creatures in the sea, but the fox and the weasel were missing because they had not entered. When Leviathan sent for them, he was told what the fox and weasel had wisely done. He was also told that the fox was exceedingly clever. When Leviathan heard of the fox's wisdom, he grew envious and sent large fish with orders to trick the fox into coming. The fox went and found the fish went and found the fox strolling by the seashore. Seeing the fish amusing themselves along the shore, the fox became curious and waded in. They asked, who are you? I am the fox, he replied. Then you surely must know what a great honor awaits you and that we have come for you. What is it? The fox asked. The fish replied, Leviathan is sick and about to die, and he has decreed that no one should be king in his place except the fox, because he has heard that you are wiser and more knowledgeable than all the other creatures. Wow, this is coming from a Leviathan. Yeah. That's this, a, is, this is a trap. <laughs> come with us. We are his emissaries, and we have come in your honor. But how can I go below the sea without dying? Asked the fox. To which they replied, Ride on top of one of us, and he will carry you above the sea. Not a drop of water from the sea will touch even the bottoms of your feet. When you arrive at the kingdom, we shall lower you. How you cannot understand now, and you will reign over all. You shall wow. be king, happy all your lifetime. You will no longer need to seek food or to fear that evil beasts larger than you will try to devour you. Oh, nice promise, huh? <laughs> this, um, okay. but you know what? At the end, uh, Leviathan eats they, him. No, no, they will be served to the people, right? Yeah, remember we read about that. Yeah, Leviathan's food. Yeah. When the fox heard their words, he believed them and rode on top of the back of one of them over the sea. But as soon as the waves swept over him, he began to regret what he had done and realized that he had lost his wits. Woe is me, he thought. What have I done? The fish have played a trick on me, equal to all the tricks I have played on other creatures. Now that I have fallen into their hands, how can I save myself? So he said to the fish, Now that I have come with you and that I'm in your domain, tell me the truth. What do you want with me? They replied, We shall tell you the truth. Leviathan heard that you are famous for being exceedingly wise and said, Let me slit his belly and eat his heart so that I will become wise. Ah, there you go. Okay, that's how it works. (laughs) That's a Leviathan thing to say. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Of course. I've seen it in the... Well, the heart is the seat of the mind. Yeah. So, bad idea. 
Anyway, why did you not tell me the truth? Asked the fox. I would have brought my heart with me, and then I could have given it to the king <laughs> Leviathan, and he would have honored me. Oh. Now you will be in trouble. Is your heart not with you there? C- crafty. Yeah. This is, this is good. Yeah, I left it at home. He's playing the Uno card. <laughs> the Uno reverse card. Oh, boy. No, the fox answered, for our custom is to leave our heart in our residence when we travel. Oh, wow. If we need it, then we fetch it. If not, it remains at home. What shall we do now? The fish asked. Oh, boy. I lodge near the seashore. If you wish, bring me back to the place you took me from. I will take my heart and come with you. And then I will give it to Leviathan. He will honor me and you. But if you bring me as I am, heartless, Leviathan will be angry and he will devour you. As for me, I have no fears, for I will tell him, My lord, they did not inform me in advance. When they told me about you, I asked them to bring me back so that I could take my heart, but they refused. The fish immediately thought, That makes sense. <laughs> Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. I could believe that. <laughs> That's reasonable. So yeah, he's a. Uh, they're they're the just cons. trying to outwit each other. Okay, uh, yeah. this is a nice little battle. <laughs> they returned to the place by the seashore from which they had taken the fox. He climbed off the fish and danced, rolling himself in the sand. Take your heart quickly and let us go. They said, "Fools." Go away. (laughs) Had I not had my heart with me, I would not have entered the sea with you. Is there a creature that walks about without having his heart with him? You played a trick on us. Fools. (laughs) I have already played a trick on the angel of death, and I can certainly play one on you. The fish returned in shame and told Leviathan. He said to them, Verily, he is smart, and you are fools. (laughs) <laughs> About you speaks the proverb, the smugness of the thoughtless shall destroy them. Proverbs one thirty two. Then Leviathan ate them. And since that time, every species, including the man and his wife, are to be found in the sea, except for the fox and the weasel. Um, I'm, I'm confused as to the point of this story. That's why foxes aren't in the sea. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, what's the human equivalent? Well, you know, you got sea lions and you got sea cows. You got manatees. Those are sea humans. Manatees. Oh, manatee. yeah, manatees. Yeah, come on, yeah. man. <laughs> There's um, Brett Keen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, now we got another situation. Oh, We're in chapter 20. Okay. And this is a short one, then I'll hand it off to you. Uh, the last two chapters are okay. kind of lengthy. Gotcha. Um, chapter 20. Why does the angel of death have power over all creatures except for the offspring of the bird, Milham? Not only over the offspring of the bird, Milham, does the angel of death not have power. He also does not rule over the descendants of Jonadab. And there are those who say that certain individual persons entered paradise alive. Are you telling me that there's a situation here? (laughs) Yeah. While you're sitting there individual with individual persons. persons? Yeah. So who's That's Jonah insane. Dab? Uh I think um, we've definitely had the name pop up before. Yeah, we have. Jonah Dab. Uh, I think he was in Kings, I'm guessing. <gasps> Wait, you know what we can check? Oh, my God. The Oxford Companions of the Bible? Yeah, yeah, because I have completely oh forgotten who uh, Jonah Dab was, but I'm pretty sure he pops up. We've definitely read uh, the name before, so... Uh, We'll we'll see what the Oxford Companion has to say, if anything. Also, let me just point out that you can tell that this is not a first or second temple period piece because they refer to an afterlife as entering paradise. Uh, That was never in the Old Testament. Maybe they need a pair of dice. No. You know, poorly translated. No, they don't. Ah, darn. Shoot. (laughs) Uh, his name was Jonadab, right? J O N A D A B. Okay. Jonadab. That's a hell of a name, ain't it? You know what? I've uh, I've seen some pretty pretty good names. I I guess that would be one of them. Oh. <laughs> Let's well. see. Uh, there's Jonah. Joseph. Nope. Are you really? Oh, no. No. Jonadab. 
Look, All right, that's fine. We'll just pull up a verse. The uh, Oxford Companion to the Internet. Yeah, it's probably better. Why no Jonah Dab? Come on. I mean, I know there's there wasn't really that much because obviously we don't even really remember him. Okay, okay. Jonah Dab is a figure in the Hebrew Bible appearing in 2 Samuel 13. Oh, yeah. He is described in verse 3 as the son of Shimea, who is the brother of David, making Jonah Dab a cousin to him. <gasps> Amnon, as well as his friend, is oh. called very wise, usually translated as very shrewd or very crafty. Was that one of the dude that got killed or killed somebody? Um, okay, uh, this is very brief, so I'll go over it. Second mm. Samuel 13 describes how Amnon wanted to have Tamar, despite the fact that she was his half-sister. We oh, yeah. That. So Jonadab advised Amnon to pretend to be sick and then asked David right. to send Tamar to make him eat some food. Okay, yeah, okay. Yes, all right. Uh, he's the guy who was like, incest? Yeah, bro, I got you. <laughs> yeah, bro. So here's what you want to do. <laughs> this guy's just, he's sick that, in the brain. That's um, for incest. So that's who Jonah Dab is. Okay. Oh, so we're getting into some of these individual persons who entered Paradise Alive Ooh. in Chapter 21, which I'll hand to you. Okay, fantastic. And we'll see if uh, we recall any of these people. All right. Shout out to Enoch. Yeah. Who are those persons? <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> Of course. Wow, I was I was spot on. Sarah, the daughter of Asher. Sarah, S E. Uh, yeah, S E R A H, daughter of Asher. Daughter of Asher. Sarah bat Asher was in the Tanakh a daughter of Asher, the son of Jacob. She's one of the seventy members of the patriarch's family who emigrated from Canaan to Egypt. And her name occurs in connection with the census taken by Moses in the wilderness. Okay. So it wasn't like a really, we didn't learn She's much about mentioned her. mentioned as a descendant of Asher in First Chronicles. Um, the fact of her being the only one of her gender to be mentioned in the genealogical list indicates her extraordinary, uh, extraordinary and her longevity. Mm. Um, we also have a Bitya, B I T. Y A H, the daughter of Pharaoh. Um, that would be the one who adopted Moses. Well, I'm trying to. Was that the one who adopted Moses? Uh, the next one is a Pharaoh's daughter in Exodus. Yes. Yeah. Then we have a Haram, uh, king of Tyre, and I believe uh, that one helped with some wars, right? Yes. So Haram. Was a Phoenician king, reigned 980 to 947 BCE, succession to Abibal. Um, Aram is also mentioned by the writings of Menander of Ephesus as preserved by Josephus's against Appion. Okay, that's. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch about him. Yeah, I think that he he helped out in some wars. Um, we also have Eliezer, the servant of Abraham. Uh, I think that was a guy who would be part of the priesthood, right? Um, according to most interpretations, the unnamed servant, the elder of Abraham's house that ruled over all that he had, Genesis 24, 2, who obtained Rebekah as a bride for Isaac was the name Eliezer. So, oh, okay. yeah, if you remember, Abraham didn't want to leave his belongings uh, to his servants. Sure. Or Isaac, you know, when he died. Mm. Uh, so he had the servant go out and find a wife for him. And they believe that that servant's name was Eliezer. Yes. Okay. Uh, Evid Melech, the Ethiopian. What? Uh, no idea. Spell that. Hold on. Uh, I got to get in again. Uh, E-V-E-D dash M-E-L-E-K-H. So... We have Evid Melech, the Ethiopian. Haven't heard of that one. We'll, oh, my God. We have uh... Evid Melech is mentioned in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 38, as an Ethiopian official at the palace of the king Zedekiah of Judah during the siege of Jerusalem. What chapter are we at in Jeremiah? Oh, fuck. I don't know. 
I don't even remember. Hold on, let me open it. Yeah, up. check it. That was in chapter what, thirty nine? You said thirty eight. Thirty eight. I think we're in chapter thirty six or thirty seven. Wow. wow. <laughs> so, so <laughs> tune in on Sunday to understand this. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not going to read it because that would be a spoiler. Yeah, we don't want any, <laughs> any spoilers for this 2,000-year-old book. Any, we're not going to give away spoilers for that. That would be horrible. Yeah. What kind of people would we be if we gave you away the ending, if you gave away the ending of that book? Of course. <laughs> um, uh, but I will. Okay, yeah, I'll explain it. So Jeremiah relayed God's message to Eben Melech saying that he would not fall by the sword during the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonians because he had put his trust in God. Mm. According to some extra-biblical legends, this extended to Ebed Melech never dying, instead joining the small group of holy people who enter heaven while still alive. Mm, okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, the servant of Rabbi Judah, Jabez, Rabbi Joshua the son of Levi, all the children of Jonadab, and the seed of the bird Milham. You know, I kind of remember uh, a few other people, well, maybe not a few other people, but other people being ascended, Yeah. right? Elijah, for example, he goes up in that fiery chariot. Yeah. Now, he's saying that mm. people who stayed up there, though, so this rabbi, uh, Rabbi Judah Hanasi, uh, was one of the guys who compiled the Mishnah. Oh, okay. That's kind of interesting. All right, it may. Okay, the Mishnah. These, these are the people who entered paradise alive. Yeah, the Mishnah was Judah's work, though it includes a few sentences by his son and successor Gamaliel the Third. Okay, perhaps written after Judah's death. Right, and they're saying they never die either, so that yeah. probably means they don't leave. So both the Talmuds assume, as a matter of course, that Judah is the originator of our, of the Mishnah, our Mishnah, as it was called in Babylon, and the author of the explanations and discussions relating to its sentences. However, Judah is more correctly considered a redactor of the Mishnah rather than its author. The Mishnah is based on the systematic division of the halakhic material as formulated by Rabbi Akiva. <laughs> Judah following in his work the arrangement of the Hakalot as taught by Rabbi Meir, Akiva's foremost student. Judah's work in the Mishnah appears both in what he included and what he rejected, and it goes on. Yeah, but, and uh, looks like this, uh, this book does explain each one of these persons and why they are included. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, why? Let me tell you, let me tell you Enoch, because he was the most righteous man in his generation and no one was like him lives in paradise. Eliezer, the servant of Abraham is the son of Ham who was Noah's son. When Eliezer heard about the curse on his father, he handed himself over to Abraham he was righteous, and therefore he lives in paradise. Sarah, the daughter of Asher, brought Jacob the news that Joseph was alive. Jacob said to her, <clears throat> The mouth that brought the good tidings to me that Joseph is alive shall not taste death. I'll be right back. It's kind of crazy that, he's, that he can give that power. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, let's Why see. Give it to I don't know. Uh, Bithya, the daughter of Pharaoh, raised Moses, our master, from his infancy, and she lives in paradise, so that people cannot ask, what was her reward for this act? Evan Melech, the Ethiopian, is there because he saved Jeremiah from the pit of mire. The servant of Rabbi Judah, of Rabbi Judah the prince, because he was righteous, humble, and lowly of spirit. And Jabez is also in paradise because he was more righteous than everyone in his generation. So it seems um, everyone righteous gets there. Uh, I You can't say everyone righteous because there's no way these are the only righteous The most people. righteous according to God at the time. They they ascend. Mm -hmm. They don't actually die. Right. Uh, so they get a whole discoporeation and everything, you know. If you ever saw Star Wars. 
Uh, I've seen clips from You've the seen Thanos Obi-Wan thing. Die? Like the Thanos thing, and they all oh, that dissolve. That's not ascending. That's dying. Yes. It's, no, it's different. They're they're different. I, I know. I said yes. All right. Well, you'll figure it out someday when you discoporeate instead of dying. And all you're, right. You're I'll really confused. Well, whatever. You send it. Uh, whatever. Plenty of people uh are said to have ascended. So these can't be the only ones. Strike me down, Darth, and I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Then he no, says, I'm your dad. No, Luke. <coughs> no, he doesn't say Luke. I'm your daddy. He doesn't say Luke. <laughs> he says no, he does, I'm. Doesn't it, he does say? He does say Luke in a prior sentence. That's right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. People always mix it together, though. It's kind of funny. Yeah. Anyways, people have terrible memory. It's just Remember no. The I'm your father. Be- bears. It was no. It was both. It was bear. It was both Berenstein and Berenstein. Okay. Remember the date of Nelson Mandela's death. All right. We're not doing the Mandela we're effect list today. Here, but, uh, Maybe top ten Mandela effects next year, guys. <laughs> when we're out of ideas. Uh. Anyways, <laughs> get so, ready for Mishnah Mondays. Oh my God, Rabbi Joshua, the son of Levi was perfectly righteous as well as a friend of the angel of death. Hey, that's a good that's pretty cool friend to have, man. Once oh this is this actually sounds like it might be a cool story. Uh once he said to the angel of death, "Show me paradise." Happily, the angel rep- responded. As he went along with him, Rabbi Joshua said, "I am afraid of you. You may slay me with your sword without meaning to." If you like me and want me to come with you, hand your knife over. I will hold it while we walk. (laughs) Then you can courteously show me paradise while I view its chambers from the gate. Fine, said the angel. Man, this angel's really easily tricked. Yeah, he got is... tricked by a fox and a weasel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you now know, this I'm, guy. This is this is a new. He's new, guys. He's yeah, brand he's new, a new, new guy. Know? Yeah. And by this time, there's already rabbis around, so it's been a while. Yeah, that's a good he's, point. Actually, he's had time to figure out how things work, and he's just like, "Oh yeah, here's my angel weapon." Yeah, and <laughs> <laughs> also let's uh, point out that. They were friends, but he was afraid of them. Yeah. Well, it's it's like the Grim Reaper shows up, and you're like, oh, man, that's a killer scythe. Can I see it for a yeah. second? It's like, sure, buddy, here you go. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, so, fine, said the angel, and he immediately took Rabbi Joshua to paradise. All right, let's see what happens in paradise. What did Rabbi Joshua do? He stood in the doorway of paradise and looked. Suddenly, he jumped into paradise, holding his hand, sorry, holding in his hand the knife of the angel of death, which he held for seven years until the Holy One, blessed be he, said to him, Rabbi Joshua, the son of Levi, you have done a great deed. (laughs) A great deed. I stole the angel of death's weapon and I went into paradise Without your permission. <laughs> thanks for telling me I did a great deal. Yo, good job, now, man. Now, return the knife to the angel of death. Please, buddy, come on. He's been come waiting for it. It's been seven years. Give him back his knife. You're come here. On. You did the thing you wanted to do. <sighs> Joke's over. Yep. Uh, I guess nobody died in those seven years. I guess. When... Rabbi Joshua jumped into paradise in the presence of the angel of death. The angel cried out loudly and sought to destroy the world. But God silenced him. After seven years, Rabbi Joshua returned the knife. Haram, king of Tyre, was brought by God into paradise because he built the temple and was at first, yeah, was uh, at first God-fearing. Yeah, well, yeah, that's right. No, he he. I don't think he. It said that he built the temple. Didn't it say that he built like uh, he built the city or something? Much of the city. I remember something. him popping up in like one verse, and then we like never hear about him again. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's very briefly mentioned, but I mean, there's histories about him in Josephus, and I also which feel we have. So we do, yeah. Not right here next to us. But we do have it. Read from Josephus. No. Uh. 
Yeah, I could swear if we just got like one verse about him. Mm-hmm. And I felt like he should have had more. Mm-hmm. Seemed like a pretty important, actually. All right. Unfor- you know, like, hand me the Oxford Companion to the Bible. We're using this twice on one show? And usefully? Well, uh, well no, we, last time it wasn't useful. We tried uh, to use it once on this show, and it failed. So let's again. see if... Uh, Either way, I can... Uh, H-I, right? Yeah, yeah. So Haram, king of Tyre. Uh, so yeah, he built the temple and was at first God-fearing. He remained alive in paradise for a thousand years. Later, however, he became arrogant and said, I am God. Sorry. <laughs> no, sorry. He said, I am a God. Makes it a little less. No, no, Hiram. No, no, Hiram. Okay, great. Fantastic. Useless. Ah. Useless Oxford continues. companion. I don't know why I got it. Maybe it was good at a time, but not anymore. Because you would think that Oxford would put out something that's useful, but no. Yeah. All right. Uh. So the way, I am a god, as it is said, because you have so haughty and because sorry, sorry, because you have been so haughty and have said, I am a god. Uh, he was then driven out of paradise and he entered hell. Oh, spooky. So you can get kicked out of heaven. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. The descendants of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, entered alive because he had fulfilled all that is written in the book of Jeremiah. We just read that chapter, didn't we? Yeah, we did talk about the Rechabites, and I guess they were cool. Yeah. Uh, He was righteous. He chastised the people of Israel, and he therefore lives in paradise. All you got to do is chastise the people of Israel. (laughs) (laughs) We don't recommend this. All right. Well, <laughs> as yeah, for, but that other dude is, as far as we know, the only person who went to hell while still alive. Yeah, technically he'd be alive, right? In hell, yeah. Yeah. wow. He's the guy who's alive in hell. That must be weird. Interesting. <laughs> yep. As well, I guess getting kicked out of heaven is a pretty big crime. Is it like? Yeah. Is it like in Monopoly where you're not in jail? You know, you're just you know looking at it. You didn't get to. You didn't get kicked out and oh yeah yeah you know what I mean yeah you just you're just looking you're just passing by just, just forever pass. just visiting <laughs> just visiting forever uh, as for the offspring of the bird Milham when Eve ate from the tree of knowledge and also gave of it to her husband and he ate with her she became envious of the other creatures and gave them all to eat. Even the carnivores. I guess. But when she saw the bird Milham and told it, eat of this, of what your friends ate, Milham replied, it is not sufficient for you that you have sinned against God. May he be blessed and cause others to die. Yet now you come to beguile me into breaking God's command that I may eat and die. I won't listen to you. Then... He admonished Eve and all the creatures. Instantly, a heavenly voice addressed Eve and Adam. You were commanded, but you disobeyed and sinned. That's not what happened. He was like, what have you done? Yeah, pretty much. Well, everyone forgets what he actually says, even even, even uh, Ben Sira. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moreover, him. if she gave the fruit to all the other animals, they die. Then wouldn't all of the other animals also have knowledge of good and evil? Yes. And according to what follows in Genesis, then the only difference between all of the animals and God is that they haven't also eaten from the fruit of the tree of life. Right. Wow. I feel like they could have, you know, they had from both. Yep. Okay. You know, they or he couldn't have put those those trees there. They weren't forbidden from eating from the tree of life, so they could have right, eaten right. from the tree of life first, and then gone and eaten from the. T- <laughs> <laughs> you know, probably at least one of them did, right? Right, right. It, it's a oh, f- tree. You know what? Um, jellyfish. Hmm? No, sorry, not jellyfish. Uh, 
Actually, would it be jellyfish? Yeah, jellyfish are, are more barely old. alive, so... Hey, 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 they've got all the things that make them a thing, okay? They don't have yeah. a central nervous yeah. system. Yeah, sorry, yeah, jellyfish. Yes, jellyfish would be the ones, the only ones. And those hydras. Lobsters. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Lobsters just keep getting bigger. And some sharks. Some sharks don't die of old age either. Hope well, you don't I'm run not... into one of those. You know, to be fair, they they do have a problem eventually regrowing all those parts that they lose from being so old right. and fighting and stuff. So they aren't in any particularly great shape when they're really old, and they eventually just die from you something know, else. Like, of- oh, all their fins are gone. Well, that's you know. I well, mean, can't we just say that like humans don't die from you know old age? We die from like things related so we have to getting older. An aging process that's genetic. It's all yeah, mammalian. All advanced mammals. Yeah, all yeah. Advanced mammals have it. I, yeah. I understand that uh, that you know we we age obviously, mm. um, and then we. Die of something. Yeah. The aging because process allows for things to be more susceptible. Yes. Yeah. But that's not the case for all animals. Right. So they didn't eat for the fruit. There's no land sure. sharks, so how'd they eat that? Yeah. How wow. do you hey, know? No. Hey, hey. <laughs> Street sharks. Oh, yeah, that's right. Pizza time. That's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Well, what do they street sharks eat? Street sharks presumably eat street fish. Whoa. You know, we'd have to watch. I doubt it. I'm not going to watch Street <laughs> Sharks. Uh, anyways. Uh, <laughs> so a heavenly voice addressed even Adam. You were commanded, but you disobeyed and sinned. And you came to the bird Milham. But Milham ref- refused because it feared me, even though I had not commanded it. Even so, it observed my decree. Because of this, neither Milham nor its offspring will ever taste death. Wow. So it's interesting that it's, uh, that it's Milham there. Yes, it's so, a great phoenix. Yeah, it's a phoenix. Yeah. Uh, let's see. For the immortality of the phoenix, cross-reference Genesis Rabbah, but there, as well as in other rabbinic sources, it is called Hol. Uh, only in this work is it called Milham. For all the human beings who were... Uh, translated alive into paradise, cross-reference Derek Eretz Zuta, end of chapter one, and see Higger's edition for parallels. Okay. You know, for an animal that uh, never dies, there sure are few of them. No, they all went to heaven. One would, I guess, they all went to heaven. Yeah, but, you Um, know, if they don't die, they can just come down here and do a thing. Yeah, later during the... End of times. Ah, right, of but course. One would suspect that they would still reproduce and... In heaven? Would there be a need to? Um, is there a need to on Earth? No. <laughs> Technically... Uh, they do it we're anyway, the, right? Guys, guys, we're the last of mankind. All seven billion of us. Yep. Good. Think about it. Good. Yeah. I mean, until the next generation. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that. Either way, not going to taste death. Great. Uh, now we're going on to the last chapter, chapter 22. You guys excited for the last chapter of Ben I'm Sira? so the excited. Alphabet? I liked it too much. It's too bad it's so short. Yeah. Well, here's a good question for you. Why does the eagle fly close to heaven higher than all the other birds? Because it can. He has nothing better to do but then to ask animal-related questions. When the eagle emerged from the ark, the female eagle stood before a bird that she wanted to eat. All the animals said, the one who wishes to eat its friend is liable to death. It's not its friend. (laughs) It's not. Uh, They (laughs) struck her, shaved her wings, and cast her into a lion's den. But God watched over the eagle, and the lions did not kill her. Okay, so did they uh, bring her food. I nope. I don't know. Um, after oh my god, they better have. After a year, the eagle's <laughs> wings grew back. Oh wait. Okay, so they okay, the the stuff grew back. Not that her actual wings right the feathers. grew back. Yeah. Um, and she flew off. The other birds met and sought to kill her, 
You know, God could just as easily go like, hey, stop it. He could, but he won't. Stop oh, it. He does this other arbitrary thing instead. Mm. <laughs> but the raven saved her from their hands by its cunning. Oh, my God. Then it copulated with the eagle. In the, in the mouth. Yes, it had to be, right? Yeah, it had to be. Um, which conceived and gave birth to a baby eagle. That is why the raven is called Orev, because it mingled Irev. It's semen. Okay, my God. Okay, so it mingled its semen uh, by the abundance of its whoring in every direction. Of course. So, you know, that raven was right do. to worry about his wife sleeping around. Yeah, yeah, I guess. yeah, he was. One of the basic meanings of, uh, yeah, one of the basic meanings of the Hebrew root of Orev is to mix. Hence the, uh, mis- uh, yeah, misogenetic nature uh, of the raven is rooted in its very name. Yeah, that's a word for race mixing. <laughs> wow, okay. Missignation. That's so raven. Mm. Uh, and when the birds searched for the female eagle, a miracle took place. Oh. The Holy One, blessed be he, caused his presence to rest on her in order that his creature not be destroyed. And he gave her strength to fly higher than all the birds. The eagle is therefore called Nesher because God came to dwell Hishra upon her this is why the eagle flies so high in the sky that her enemies can never capture and kill her and thereby cause a species of the holy one's creatures to disappear from the world because no species has ever gone extinct never no not a single one i could (laughs) i couldn't just have a montage for six and a half hours of different animals that went extinct no so well so while the final lesson there is um that uh god did it mm. um to to protect the eagle uh there is one last sentence oh let's hear it nebuchadnezzar said to ben sira blessed is he who gave of his wisdom of his wisdom to those who fear him and revealed to them hidden and profound matters wow well that is the, the alph- alphabet of Ben Sira. You know, hey, folks. Uh, this this book, I th- it's very cheeky because uh, I, th- I feel like those last um, however many chapters, those last twenty two chapters. Actually, you know what? the whole the whole book, the whole book. Um, the the I think that's just like a tongue in cheek kind of you know hidden and profound matters. Like maybe he's making a joke about how. I don't know. People have been reading way too far into things. And he's like, this is, you're pulling this out of your ass. Mm-hmm. Let me pull some stuff out of my ass too. Uh, that's the the vibe I'm getting from the, from the author there. Yeah. This was yeah. an incredibly witty kid who just really likes to one up and show off. It's an absurd situation in general. Yeah. Uh, everything about it is, is ridiculous and I love it. Yep. That was a very, very fun book. Uh, so a good next. parody, but next week we're going to be getting into actual wisdom literature. Yeah, w- wisdom of Solomon. And the last one that we will be reading until, I guess, we get to potentially other wisdom literature in the New Testament and New Testament Apocrypha. Yeah, well... I wonder I mean, how much wisdom literature there is in the New Testament Apocrypha. We'll look it up. Yeah, we'll... <laughs> We'll look into it. Uh, and uh, on Sunday, we're going to be having a guest on the show. Oh. Uh, he's a YouTube OG. Ooh. Yeah, been around for quite a long time. Doesn't ah. really do that much, <laughs> but, but uh, he's been around for a while. Zonstar will be on the show on Sunday. I was hoping you would say Venom Fang X. That would, but ah. that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Never, though. That's not going to happen, guys. Probably you know not. I haven't seen him in years. We'll, uh, once we start in John... Oh, right, right. <laughs> no. We'll reach out to him. We could also reach out to Brett Keen. Oh, no, let's not. Oh, can you imagine? I mean, it'd be hilarious, but let's not. Only if there's a section about manatees and sitting there. 
so that's the that's who we're gonna have uh Zonstar we're gonna have on the show on Sunday. Uh so make sure to tune in for, for that one. Uh gonna be, you know, continuing in Jeremiah. Yep. Uh and other than that, let's uh let's chill a little bit. Yeah, so uh, you can check out our Patreon because on Patreon you can pay one dollar and get access to all of our video scripts. You can pay five bucks and get our self-published books you can pay 10 bucks and be entered into a monthly t-shirt giveaway and that that giveaway is great by the way because uh chris if you want to pin the the new shirt it should just be right there that's already chosen yep Yep. Yep. uh so new shirt uh of course this is uh our favorite quote ecclesiastes uh one two yep meaningless Uh, (laughs) everything is meaningless yep Completely Completely meaningless. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, So there it is. There's a very sad B on it. So sad. Looking there, hanging out on some honeycombs, lamenting existence. How could he be so sad? (laughs) (laughs) It's it's incredible. You should just get the shirt. Um, You can get it on our Teespring if you don't want to enter the giveaway. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, And for or you get it for uh, you know your friend for 20 bucks you can enter our monthly patron hangout yeah and for 50 bucks you can be on one of our shows once a month yeah it's good stuff you can join landon yeah and Uh, beyond that we also have an amazon wish list full of books books that you can add to this table so that we can read them so that you don't have to and and I think that's yeah. uh, that's pretty good because that a lot that's a lot of work there reading. Additionally, <laughs> there's the six 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 donation drive, which we'll get eventually. Yeah, and then we'll we're gonna there. be doing the Scientology stuff, Thetan meter, as we said earlier. So I uh, think that's all the shilling. Let's see. Drop a like if you haven't subscribed, share it around, all that good stuff. And uh, it's free to join us on Facebook or Twitter. Yeah, Facebook and Twitter. Free to follow us on there. Uh, yeah. All links are in the description. So without further ado, we we will will see you on Sunday. Sunday.